Hey folks, I thought I would take a moment to briefly review the life cycles that we've been talking about. I know that this can be a confusing topic for students, and so I'd like to spend a little bit of time going over some of the essential elements. Let's start by making sure we understand the difference between mitosis and meiosis. So in mitosis, it's important to remember that we don't have a change in ploidy. Recall that ploidy refers to the number of copies of chromosomes per cell. So a great example of this is when a diploid cell divides to create another diploid cell. Similarly, a haploid cell could divide to create another haploid cell. Both of these don't result in any change in ploidy, so they're considered mitosis. Now meiosis has a reduction in ploidy. And so in this example, we're going from a diploid cell to a haploid cell. You're most familiar with this because this is the way you think about the production of gametes in animals. But remember that plants always produce their gametes by mitosis. So that's an important difference to wrap your head around. Now the next part is just the fundamental reality of sexual reproduction in eukaryotes, and that is we have an egg cell and a sperm cell which fuse to give a unicellular diploid cell that we call a zygote. That zygote then goes on and to, to do other things. Now, the key feature here is that we don't really know how the gametes are produced. This depends on the group. In plants, it's by mitosis. In animals, it's by meiosis. Nor do we know what happens to the zygote as it continues on. In a haplontic life cycle, the zygote immediately undergoes meiosis. But in a diplontic life cycle, or an alternation of generations, the zygote continues to divide by mitosis. Now let's have a look at a diplontic life cycle. This is the one that you're most familiar with. This is the life cycle of animals, and so here we have two people of the opposite sex, male and female, which produce gametes, sperm and egg. Sperm and egg meet up to make a unicellular diploid zygote, and that zygote continues to grow and divide by mitosis to eventually become a multicellular diploid adult stage. So the key thing here is to realize that we're going from 2N to N when we produce gametes. That makes this meiosis. There is no multicellular haploid stage. In a haplontic life cycle, which is the life cycle of something like an alga, the adult is not diploid. The adult is multicellular and haploid. That means that this is the gametophyte because it is going to make gametes. Notice that we're going from haploid to haploid. So 
this is mitosis. Those gametes then fuse to make a unicellular diploid zygote. And instead of growing by mitosis, this zygote immediately undergoes meiosis. This results in four structures. which have flagelli and swim, and they're called zoospores. Each of those zoospores can then grow by mitosis to eventually develop into a new adult. So meiosis happens right after we get a zygote forming. And so what this means is that there is no multicellular diploid stage. The last one is alternation of generations. An alternation of generations were going between a multicellular haploid adult and a multicellular diploid adult. The easiest thing here is to start with what we know. We know that plants produce their gametes by mitosis. Because gametes are haploid, we know that that's the part of the plant that's going to make the gametes. Because it's the plant that makes the gametes, we call it the gametophyte, just like we did with algae. So the gametophyte makes gametes by mitosis. Those gametes then fuse to eventually form a zygote. Remember, the zygote is unicellular and diploid. That zygote will then undergo lots of mitosis to develop into a multicellular diploid stage. That multicellular diploid stage is what we call the sporophyte. The reason why is because the sporophyte is where we get meiosis to make spores. And the spores in alternation of generations are not swimming, they are airborne. So these are our airborne spores, each of which can then grow by mitosis to develop into a new gametophyte. Now, based on the example we talked about in lecture, when you apply something like this to bryophytes, and we're specifically going to refer to moss, it becomes a little bit more clear. So let's just keep in mind our alternation of generations life cycle. So we are going from gametophyte to gametes, gametes to zygote, zygote to sporophyte, sporophyte to spores, spores to gametophyte. So where are these structures in something like a moss? Well, recall that moss are gametophyte dominant. The green fuzzy stuff that you see on a moss, that's the gametophyte generation. So that means that we're starting here with the gametophyte. 
What's the gametophyte do? Well, it undergoes mitosis to make gametes. And in moss, sometimes, but not always, there are separate sexes. So we'll say that this is the female moss, and we'll say that this is the male moss. Both of them are gametophyte dominant. We have to make gametes. Well, on the female, the gametes are going to be produced in archegonia. And the moss are going to be produced in antheridia. Because sperm in moss must swim through water to reach the egg, what's going to happen is the sperm are going to re uh, be released from the antheridium, and they have to swim to the archegonium. So here's another female moss. Eventually, that sperm is going to swim all the way to the archegonium where there is an egg. So you end up with the formation of a zygote. So let's think about where we are. We've made gametes. Fertilization has happened, so now we've made a zygote. Well, what happens next? Well, we have to undergo mitosis to make a sporophyte. And in moss, The sporophyte is nutritionally dependent on the gametophyte and attached. And so it grows by mitosis from where the zygote is to eventually form on top of the gametophyte. So now we're here. We've made the sporophyte. Remember that this structure is where the spores are produced. That's called the spore angium. Eventually what will happen is that spore angium will crack open and we're making spores. Spores will be released, fall to the ground, and then eventually grow into a new gametophyte. And so you can see by applying the alternation of generations life cycle to something like a moss, we can get a little bit better idea of how it worked. Okay, I hope that helps, and please don't hesitate to ask me questions if you have any. I'll see you in lecture.